Thank you very much, Peter and Mark and others uh, for giving me this opportunity to um, talk about something that I think is, is close enough to um, the center of gravity of this meeting to, to hopefully be relevant. And Nick, just to say that we can see your notes as well. So we've got um, some, some. Okay, sorry, it shouldn't be doing that. Uh, it shouldn't be doing that, sorry. Um, now, hang on. Uh, that is a pain. Sorry. Um, that is hide presenter view. That's better. Is that better? It is. Um, that's it. Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yes, the basically what this talk to, is to do is really just to give you a very um, quick overview of work that we've been doing for a while now and which is in a an archive paper um, for the ICCS 10 uh, meeting last summer. Um, I will also just briefly mention my three hats at LSE, Open University and Warwick. Um, I will be a visitor at Grantham Institute instead of CATS uh, in the near future. Um, and really it's just what I'd like you to have in mind is just two sort of very basic high level questions which are um, we all we've all come across um, the Hasselman equation and I think all, most of the um, audience have come across the Langevin equation and most of us are aware that there's a there's essentially a one-to-one -one correspondence between those two equations which I'll show you in a minute um, but can you use that to find a framework in which the Hasselman equation and recent fractional energy balance models are two extreme limits and there's plenty of room in the middle um, to consider other possible forms of correlation, periodicity and so forth. So that's first question. And second question is, can you use this framework to examine setups in which you can have a fluctuation dissipation theorem, but you don't have to? So it's not built into the formalism as an unavoidable thing, but it's a thing that you can switch on or off. And of course, the third question is, how does it relate to um, some of the other work that's been going on in this area? I've highlighted Montreal because really Sean's work is, Sean Lovejoy's work is the bit that I hope to be able to say a bit about today. So that's um, the first thing that all of you will have seen, I'm sure, the classic um, zero dimensional EBM. This is just to remind you of the notation. And I think most of you will be aware that rather like instant mashed potato, you can turn this into a, an instant stochastic differential equation by adding white noise. Um, in this case, it, the white noise is um, so-called white because it's delta correlated. Okay. And you're also, I think in many, most of you will be aware that there's a one-to-one -one match between this and the original stochastic equation of physics, which is the Langevin equation. And essentially what you've done is you replaced um, heat capacity with mass, um, the feedback parameter with damping and so forth, and the uh, forcing with the deterministic force. And of course the temperature anomaly with velocity. Now. And of course, there's plenty you can do with this model. I'm not suggesting it's obsolete. This is just an example of something we did with it quite recently, um, where you're essentially using it to drive a model of economic damages. Um, but my point today is to say, well, actually, the Langevin equation is a convenient fiction, and it's long been understood to be such. It's what it's 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 long understood that really there are problems where you can't assume that all the fast things are very, very fast and all the damping is very, very, um, well, the damping is instantaneous, that instead you have to consider a more general scenario um, where you have a memory kernel and which allows um, some kind of memory in the um, in the damping here and you you allow for the fact that your um, noise isn't necessarily white and uh, if you have a classic um, fluctuation dissipation theorem working uh, indeed as you switch on anything other than a delta correlated damping um, 
uh, integral here, you will uh, you will begin to have red noise here. However, that may not operate. Um, and in those circumstances, you can have, for example, a model like the one that Padilla, Vallis and others used um, to look at where they had, say, an orange Nuremberg process here and a constant damping um, here instead of the damping integral. But the key thing is to say, well, suppose um, you were allowed to make an ad hoc, and, and I stress this is an ad hoc uh, replacement at the moment, and just say, well, what would a Hasselman model with, with a damping integral look like? That is, if you like, a generalized Hasselman equation. Now, um, the next point is to say, what's the most extreme possible damping that you can have? And, the, and that's when, um, what, what's, sorry, what's the, what's the longest ranged damping that you can have? And that's when you've replaced this damping kernel by a power law. Uh, so it drops off very, very, very uh, quickly initially, but it never dies out completely, unlike an exponential. And it's, it's in, those, in, that, in that scenario, you can replace the, um, you can replace this integral by uh, symbolically by a, a thing called a fractional derivative. And this is quite well known in the condensed matter literature as, um, and is a relatively well studied equation. Um, again, if a fluctuation dissipation theorem holds, um, the behavior of the noise, it, the behavior of the noise is tied to this derivative, but it doesn't generally have to be. And really I will just skip through the implications of this is saying, well, it granted there is a fractional Langevin equation. If we made the same ad hoc replacements we had before, what would the fractional Hasselman equation look like? Again, I stress all this is in the paper. The interesting immediate comparison is to say, well, is that the same as the fractional energy balance equation that Sean Lovejoy has been talking about quite recently, which is of this form? Uh, which is discussed in his book in a number of interesting uh, papers that I think are all currently in the discussion stroke review stage, but the, the preprints are up there. Um, and the answer is not quite, almost, but not quite. And it, the, the not quite is interesting. So in other words, he has an equation of this form. To make the comparison, we take ours, which is, is this guy here on the right hand side and fractionally integrate it once and make a couple of relabeling. So we replace the two minus alpha that I had by uh, a D, which is essentially the same as his, his H in his paper. And we replace a constant that depends on the order of differentiation with another constant, which again depends on that, but essentially sets a time scale. And you can see that the result of all of that is an equation that's almost isomorphic to his, except that with two interesting differences. And one is there's an overall fractional derivative outside. So the forcing term will not be exactly the same between both equations. And the second interesting difference is, um, is, is he is explicitly driving with white noise. We're driving with a noise that where this constant h can be tied to the derivative if, if an FDT is operating, it doesn't have to be. So um, the first difference, of course, depends on whether you want to have a forcing term in your Hasselman formalism. I know that quite a few people don't work with a, an undriven Hasselman formalism, such as, for example, Peter's group did when they, when they take the driving out, as they did in the Nature paper. Two minutes, uh, I know please. mine must be close to time. Hey, you got two minutes. Okay. Um, so I appreciate that the, 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 the formalism gets rather weird looking and, and I've gone through it rather quickly, but I'm hoping that this gives you a high level view of what, why we're doing this and you can look at the paper if you're interested. But the summary messages are three. One is if it actually positing and exploiting the formal equivalence between Hasselman and Langevin, that, that essentially positing that that will carry on between a fractional Hasselman, sorry, a a generalized Hasselman and a generalized Langevin equation and a fractional Hasselman and a fractional Langevin equation allows us to look at generalizations with arbitrary kernels um, 
and allows us to examine the consequences of whether of, of having a classical um, fluctuation dissipation theorem operating or switching it on and off. Now, as I say, there's a, there's a preprint version of this out at the moment for a conference paper. I'm working on uh, improving it and writing it up for proper journal submission. Uh, thank you. <laughs>